Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, President of the Illinois Policy Institute, Matt Paprocki. I'm Matt Paprocki, the president of the Illinois Policy Institute, and I have a confession. But before I get into that, I think there's something you should know. I've lived in Chicago for the last 15 years, and I hate the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> this hatred runs deep, generations deep. It all started with this man. Stanley Martin Peck, my grandfather. He's a former Marine, a volunteer firefighter, and a lumberman. He raised 13 kids in a one-bathroom house. And sometimes, working in the lumber yard, his boss would give him free tickets to the Chicago White Sox. And so it begins. His 13 kids all love the Chicago White Sox, and they hate the Chicago Cubs. It has gotten so bad that my uncle was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and he's saying, and I quote, a great day in Chicago is when the Cubs lose and the White Sox win. And I agree with him. I hate the Chicago Cubs. Because when you live in Chicago, you have a choice. On the north side, you have the Cubs. On the south side, you have the White Sox. You love one team and you hate the other. And despite living on the north side, I hate the Chicago Cubs. So when a friend of mine asked me and my three-year-old daughter if we wanted to go to a Cubs game, I knew exactly who I'd be rooting for, literally whoever the Cubs were playing against. <laughs> so we get to the game, we walk into Wrigley Field, we find our seats, we sit down, we have a hot dog. And then I see something that I've never seen happen at a baseball game before. An usher walks over to my daughter and says, Hi, little girl, what's your name? And my daughter says, my name is Fiona Rose the Brave. I'm three years old, and I'm very precocious. <laughs> the usher looks at her and says, well, Fiona Rose the Brave, I just caught a foul ball, and I want to see if you wanted it. My daughter is beaming. I tell you about how excited I am, but I actually took a picture at that moment. Shh. She is electric. She is so excited. Two innings later, a different usher walks up to her and says, I got a pack of baseball cards. Do you want it? My daughter rips open this pack of baseball cards like it is Christmas morning, and she spends an entire inning enamored at the pictures on these cards. The next inning, a different usher <laughs> walks up to us and says, I just caught a foul ball. Do you want it? Where the hell are these foul balls coming from? <laughs> and then my daughter tugs on my shirt, and she asks me a question. She says, Daddy, what team are we rooting for? <laughs> so I'm getting ready to tell her, Fiona, we hate the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> and I get down on my knee, and I look at her, and I say, Fiona? And I'm looking at that face and those beautiful brown eyes, and she's smiling. And we have an amazing moment, and I freeze. How do I tell her that we hate the Cubs because her father's mother's father got free tickets to a Chicago White Sox game 60 years ago? <laughs> How do I tell her that the, we, we hate the Cubs who play in our neighborhood, the neighborhood we love, but they're the bad guys? How do I tell her the ushers who have been so kind to her that day, they're the enemies? So I look her in the eyes, I take a deep breath, I swallow hard, I say, Fiona, today we're cheering for the Cubs. She looks up at me and she goes, good. Next thing you know, there's a pop fly to right field. Cubs catch the ball. Cubs win. I pick up my daughter, and I have an usher in the other arm, and we are singing, Go Cubs Go, at the top of our lungs. And I'm looking at the field, and I'm dizzy. What the hell just happened? 
Right, and it didn't happen because of these players who just won the game on the field. It didn't happen because of the millions of dollars that the Cubs spend in advertising every year. It happened from the ushers, right, who showed us a great time at the game, who live in our neighborhood, who are amazing. And I realized this is bigger than the Cubs. This is bigger than baseball. This is everything. Right? This is the reason we're here right now in Orlando. How do we create converts? Right? That's what the ushers did to us that day. Now, I think it's important to know if our goal is to win converts, well, where are we? Who's on our team? Now, every year, Gallup does a study. And they ask people, what's your political ideology? Conservative, liberal, or moderate? Now, it should come at no surprise to anybody in this room who the majority of the population identifies with. Right? We see this in the indoctrination of our schools and what's happening with our kids. We hear it all the time with the liberal media. Right? The majority group in the United States is liberals, right? Wrong. It's conservatives. 36% of the population identifies as conservative. The next highest group, moderates at 35%. The biggest minority in the United States of America is liberals at 25%. Now, I understand that Gallup is not a perfect methodology for determining this, right? Right now, I think I'm looking at a couple hundred libertarians who are saying, I hate all three of those groups, right? <laughs> I get it, I get it. But the point is, is that no group has a majority share in the United States of America. And if anybody has the biggest base, it's conservatives. So if our ideas aren't winning, the problem is that we don't have a big enough base. The problem is that we need to be winning converts, not winning arguments. Right? That's what the ushers told me that day. That's what I saw, and that's exactly what happens. So if our goal is to win converts, not to win arguments, what do we do? Imagine that day if I went to Wrigley Field and an usher came up to my daughter and said, hey, little girl, did you know that the Chicago Cubs have a better 10-year winning percentage than the White Sox? Or worse, what if they had a white paper that they came and brought to her and said, here's all the statistics. I'll just leave that there, and I'll come back to it later. What would have happened? Right? We all know what would have happened. I never would have cheered for that team. And the reason I know this is because I've done it. In March of 2019, the Illinois General Assembly passed out a ballot initiative. It brought it up for voters the next November to move from a flat income tax to a progressive tax. And when it passed out, 65% of Illinoisans favored the progressive tax. So I brought our team into a room. and I said, we got to win every argument possible. We did every econometric study, every argument on how bad this would be. We did it for an entire year. And from March of 2019, support for the progressive tax was at 65%. A year later, March of 2020, support for the progressive tax was at 65%. We won a lot of arguments. We didn't win any converts. And I thought to the ushers that day, what did they do? They were happy warriors, right? Regardless of the Cubs win or lost, they cared about us having a good experience. And how do they do that? They fought for people, not against things. If you're looking for a perfect example of that, look no further than the two amazing women who were just on this stage. They fought for Trinity. They're fighting for April. right? And we were all there with them. That's what it looks like. But being a happy warrior also means we need to be warriors. Meaning we have to show up in places with people who disagree with us. We have to be at places that we're not welcome. It's like me showing up at Wrigley Field. That's where we have to be. And there is no better blueprint than 2,000 years ago. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Now, you don't even have to be a Christian to appreciate what Jesus did with 12 followers. At this conference, we have 1,200. But the instruction is just the same. We have to get out of this room. 
We have to get out of this conference. We have to get away with, from people who agree with us. Because our goal is to win converts, not to win arguments. And finally, when we stepped away and we said, how do we bring people in? How do we fight and convert people? We learned from the ushers. And on the progressive tax, we told stories. We sat next to people and we fought for them. And we engaged on how it would affect their lives. Support from the progressive tax in the next six months went from 65% support to 46% on election day, where it died in Illinois. And not just that, there were 618,000 people who voted for President Biden who voted against the progressive tax. We created converts, we listened to the ushers, and it worked. How do I know that creating converts instead of winning arguments can achieve the impossible? My name is Matt Paprocki. I'm the president of the Illinois Policy Institute, and I have a confession to make. Actually, I'm going to let my daughter make it. Thank you.